Hello and welcome to the studio for something a bit different. It's that time of year again. Halloween is on the horizon. Uh, it's, it, it's quite the 20th, 20th of October here and uh, the weather out there, grey skies, miserable, windy, it kind of suits this whole Halloween thing. So it's become a bit of a tradition for Mr Palmer to do some kind of Halloween watercolour. I've done a few over the years. Have a look back on the uh, YouTube channel. And of course, if you are new to the YouTube channel, do make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because that really does go a long way to getting me up towards 100,000. I'm nearly at 80,000 subscribers now, so thank you so much to everybody that has subscribed over the course of the uh, uh, few past years worth of me being here. I've made a bit of an effort with the old Halloween decks. Help. I like that sign. I should take that to painting workshops. I think that'd be quite useful. Um, so looking forward to this one, folks. It's going to be something quite, quite different. And hopefully you will enjoy watching paint dry because that's what it is. Um, just a big thank you to anybody ahead of the time that happens to donate anything on the old super chat. That's the little sort of dollar symbol at the bottom of the live chat. Um, because I do sometimes miss people that donate on there but if you do I'll say thank you now once I'm in the painting world sometimes we forget um so yes it's going to be a good one today and I've got my palette and my paper ready here is a sheet of watercolor paper this is quarter imperial its size is 11 by 15 inch or quarter imperial 11 by 15 inch 140 pound 300 gram not surface watercolor paper stuck to a board ready for action pretty much palettes ready over here as well um i will i mentioned the colors and materials as we go through the picture but i'm i'm basically using my own paints you can sort of see them down here just loitering matthew palmer watercolors everything we're using is available on this website right here all the w's.watercolor.tv if you do want to get all of any of the materials that's the place to go to get them um, and I just want to quickly say, folks, before we start painting, I will be talking about a uh, workshop that's coming up uh, very soon as well. So there's always a live workshop. I want to mention this. Um, this is the website here where you want to head off to to get yourself um, booked on to uh, one of my watercolour workshop days. As I'm sat here live on the 20th of October 2022, this is the next one that's coming up sunday the 23rd of october paint it's kind of halloween themed in a way but it's not directly halloween themed i've always wanted to paint a campfire by the side of a lake a moonlit lake so what we're doing this sunday is painting a cozy campfire scene by an autumnal moonlit lake in watercolors and you can see quite clearly you can watch it live or at any time after once you've bought it it is yours to keep forever have a look at these images top left top right the moon reflecting in the lake the campfire in the foreground it's going to be a belter folks do get your bookings in place for that one it's only 10 quid 10 pound and all you need is three basic colors all you need to do that workshop on sunday is some natural blue or French ultramarine or something similar or cobalt blue. How many people are doing the workshop in the chat? Because we are live. How many people are doing the this workshop? Give us a thumbs up if you are. Um, so you want some kind of a blue, some kind of a yellow. This is natural yellow light we've got here. And red, this is natural red. Um, but you might have cobalt blue, French ultramarine. You might have cadmium yellow, lemon yellow. You might have rose madder or something like that. And the brushes, you want three brushes. And the brushes, what I recommend using are three brushes, a large, medium and small. So here we've got a large size 20. Oh, matron. Um, come on, camera, focus on the brushes, not on my face. Hide the face. There we go. <laughs> we've got a medium, which is a size 10 or 12 brush. And we've got a five or six. So three brushes, three brushes, large, medium, small, three paints, a bit of watercolour paper, and you can do the workshop on Sunday. Quite a lot of you giving us the old thumbs up, which should be good, which should be great, so perfect. But we're here to paint some spooky stuff. The links are in the description to book on this workshop. We've got about 15 spaces left, give or take, one or two either side. So 
I'm just going to go for this. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. And welcome to people that have not been here for a while. Thanks for joining us. This will be about 45 minutes worth of painting time from now. Don't forget to hit the like button. We've got 110 people watching live and only 26 likes. What are we playing at? Come on. I'll stick an extra pumpkin in if you give us an extra like. Maybe. So, first thing to do is basically to use water, because it is watercolour, and to wet the old piece of paper. Because I want to go for something quite dramatic here. It's got to be dramatic, moody, atmospheric, nighttime sort of thing. So I've got a big brush. This one is a, a Matthew Palmer Super Point brush, the large one, which is about a size 20. Um, a little bit, it's a little bit bigger than a 20. It's about a 21, but that doesn't exist really in traditional brush terms so two or three coats of water is where you want to be with this and you want to get plenty of color on so this one's three good coats of water now just want to make this clear while i'm while i'm wetting the paper you do need to bear in mind that what we're doing here today is a watercolor demonstration so it's going to be very quickly done it's not a workshop this is a demo okay um it's not step by step it's a demo, so it's a sit back, put your feet up, chill out and relax vibe. Basically. Let's go for some blues, blue colours, that kind of thing. Um, I think we want to get some turquoise in this one as well, but we're going to start off with natural orange. Natural orange, which is here. Beautiful colour. These are my own brand of paints, check them out. A good bit of twisting going off here. Let's get some nice oranges coming in. Joseph Collins, welcome. We've not seen, we've not heard from you for a while. Thank you, Joseph, for um, watching today's demo. And Joseph, five dollars has been donated from your well-earned pennies. Thank you so much, Joseph uh, Collins. That goes into keeping the lights on and keeping the paint flowing. Thank you so much for that. So a twist of orange is where we're at at the minute. So if you're uh, a regular YouTube viewer you know it's always good little things go a long way for us content creators but there's one thing that really helps and that's just hitting that notification bell because that's the only way that you're going to get informed of these demos that that happen so i'm putting orange in i'm twisting the brush flat to the paper so a nice little twist of paint there i'm going to go a little bit stronger in the foreground and there's a reason for that later on so it's a twist of the brush again i'm working fast here folks remember that this painting will improve with age as we go through the next sort of 45 minutes to an hour so that's the orange clean the brush and um, i then want to go for something a little bit unusual so i'm actually i'm going to go for some turquoise here natural turquoise i want to go for dramatic scenes now turquoise is a dramatic color so natural turquoise which is great for seascapes would also be quite nice for this. And you might think, why are you putting turquoise in this? Well, you'll see where we're going. Because we want to get some drama-filled skies here. So we're twisting the paint. Don't be afraid of twisting the colour. Keep that paint moving. That's what it's all about. So this is natural turquoise, which is actually a colour that's originally designed for doing seascapes. Okay. But it would be quite nice for this to give some drama to this, this watercolour picture. This moody, atmospheric, Halloween themed picture. You can smell the fear. It's alive. Right. Beautiful. I love that colour. I mean, it's, it's unusual. No doubt about it. But, you know, it is what it is. Clean brush. Clean brush. Very clean brush. Back, back to palette. We're going to take some natural violet. Natural violet's the next one. Again, these are my own colours. Have a look online. You'll see them all. Let's get some natural violet, beautiful natural violet coming in. Twisting that paint. The paper's lovely and wet still. Is it me or is it moist? The paper is wet. It needs to be. Mix it with the turquoise. Swirl the brush. Look at that. Beautiful. Just let it make a mess on your paper. We can all do that, can't we? We can all make a mess on a bit of watercolour paper. I'm excited for you. If you're new to painting, just slap it on. It's only a bit of paper. The enjoyment that comes from slapping on a bit of paper speaks for itself. So, drum, drama. Get some in the foreground here as well. It's all good stuff. Twist it in. 
Now at this point, I'm actually going to use the lid off of a masking fluid bottle. And I'm going to try and put quite a large moon in. So I'm going to, because you've got to have a moon on your Halloween picture. And then we'll go darker over the top of it. So we're going to press this where we think would work well, probably about here. Press it firmly. There we go. We have the moon. So that's basically giving us a misty moon. Now, if we need to refine that in any way, we can do. But before we do refine it, I want to go darker. I want to go grey, basically. So natural grey is my next colour. And this is where we need to think about actually working quite heavy with the paint. Um, yeah, so that, that paint's actually creeping back over that moon a little bit. But it's not a problem because we can always refine it later. It, it, it'll look misty. So we're going to twist the paint over the top. It's still very, very wet and very active. And we're going to basically go dark here. Let's go for, let's go for drama. Dramatic. It's, it's still, this paper is really holding this water. It's crazy. Look how, look how that moon's creeping back in there. It looks great. I love that. It's holding it so, so well. Because it's damp. Damp with excitement. Right. And I'm using this colour extremely strong here as well, so I'm not being afraid to be quite quite heavy with the old paint here. Let's go smaller with these clouds. So it's like a it's like a rotation effect. I love how that's that's sort of crept back in. It looks really creepy. Moody atmospheric and all that stuff wiggle your brush in fact I want to go for a smaller brush now actually I want to use a size 10 brush because it, the sky is where it's at so I'm, I'm using a, a size 10 brush here and I've got a ridiculously strong paint here very thick paint It's quite an interesting feel when you paint the sky because basically you're not in control. The water is in control here, so you're sort of just hoping for the best, basically. And being extremely thick especially around that moon I mean that paint is ridiculously it's you look at the palette you can see I'm taking the paint almost straight from the blob and I'm going in and this is a great time to work on this because I can really go in with this extremely dark color and just keep twisting the paint just let the paint become part of the, the background I love that little bit of moon creeping through if it's lost its shape you can always put white in later that depends how wet the background is. Bring it down here. I'm using an absolute stack of colour here, it's lovely. Wiggle it. Bring it over there. Now obviously, I'm now going to spend a bit of time blending, softening what we've got. And for this, I want to simply come back to the big brush, clean it in the water, squeeze all of it out, and use the edge of the brush to blend in almost create rain. In fact, if you picked up some colour on the edge of the brush, you could actually create some, some rain. Drag it down. You almost got like that sort of rain effect with your grey. Depends how wet your paper is, but it's still pretty, 
Still pretty wet here, to be honest. There we go. So that has got a load, an absolute stack of drama. That's crazy. I'm just going to try something out here. It might not work, but we'll give it a try. Um, just as this is about to dry, so what I'm going to do here, folks, I'm just going to sneak over here. I'm just going to grab a, a, this hair dryer, this heat gun, huh? and uh, pop it on. Now, I've not dried that too much because what I want to do is I want to use this plastic card here and actually scrape away some, some highlights in the clouds. So I'm using the edge of a card. This is just like a hotel key card kind of thing. And uh, put some light into these clouds. Give it, let's get close in. We'll zoom in closer. So basically what I'm doing is, just as this is about to dry, I'm scraping off some highlights in the clouds as though the moon is catching them can you see now this is what helps to give that added drama look at that so it says the moon is catching the clouds we can be a little bit more avant-garde abstract is probably the better description with it being halloween we can get away with a little bit i wouldn't probably normally do this effect but um it's quite nice on the as though the moon is illuminating using the size 10 brush that's quite effective that using the size 10 brush here and um, we're going to use it damp and just lightly blend away any any hard lines that we might possibly have at this particular point that looks really effective that so as long as you don't go in with any more paint there's nothing wrong with, with touching up your picture blending those scrapes in to make almost like a surreal kind of moonlit overly dramatic cloud effect which is what we're trying to go for here look at that it's quite quite punchy isn't it um when all that dries off i can go back in and put some extra light in the moon etc but that just illuminates we'll come back with the zoom a little bit here but that's given me that kind of dramatic very dramatic looking sky uh, which is which is great. I mean, just look at that nice atmosphere it's created there. It looks lovely, don't it? Quite a quite a fan of that. To be honest. Now that does need a thorough dry because I can't really progress till until that's dry. So I want to dry this, and I'll be honest with you, this is like watching paint dry. So it'll take me thirty seconds just to dry it off now if i was doing this pre-recorded i would edit this bit out but because it's live i mean it, literally we are live now's a good time to check out this workshop folks head on over to the website and um, this is coming up on sunday the 23rd there's one pretty much every single weekend i've got a little video here which will show you more information
There you go, that took a while. That was a very wet piece of paper. I'll blame this guy. Is it a guy? Is that a guy? I don't know, you tell me. I don't know the uh, logistics of it. I don't know the biology. James Burnop, by the way, James Burnop, can I say a big, big thank you and a big shout out to you for donating £10 of your well-earned money. Thank you so much, James. It means an absolute lot, honestly, from here. James uh, Burnop and Joseph Collins, thank you for the donation. This is nice and dry now, so we're ready to do some creepiness down here. Whatever that creepiness may be, let's go for it. We've got quite a good looking sky. I shall come back in with some white paint here, look. And literally, this white paint is useful to have uh, popped to one side. So what I'm going to actually do here is I'm going to take a scrap piece of paper. Now, my particular white paint is my own brand. It's a liquid white, which is lovely to use. Look at that. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. It's good. Bit of water on a number six brush or a size six brush. Mix it in. Mix it in. Um, yes, uh, watercolour workshops are for beginners. Absolutely, 100% for beginners. Let's get close in because the sky is the main draw here. So let's use this. Let's use this brush here and let's refine the moon. Don't go out on mowers. No. Stick to the road. There's trouble on mowers. Let's pop that in there. Look at that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We'll pop a little bit of white on here as well. Just a little bit of sneaky white on these edges. Now I'll soften all this in in a second. Don't worry, trust me. I'm an artist. Let's put a bit of white up here as well. Beautiful. How many people are sat there in fancy dress? Just me then. What would £10 be in, in Australian dollars? It's about $16, I think. Um, Kerry's asking that question. And that's the price of the painting workshops on a Sunday. £10. And there's a back catalogue to go through as well. So once you've once you've actually bought the um, the uh, workshop, it is yours to keep forever. So it's a really nice thing as well. You know, you don't have to be there in person, as it were. You can basically revisit, paint it whenever you like. It's all part of the fun of it, and it's for complete beginners and just people that just want to improve. Basically, that's that's what the workshops are. It's not like this. It's not me working through my own speedy pace it's basically a steady smooth um transition from each step and of course it's a lovely subject you know it, if you like your halloween stuff a moonlit lake with a campfire has got a little bit of that about it i think um not full on halloween but it's got that sort of because some people don't like halloween you know that's the thing to say me personally as you can probably tell i quite enjoy it Look how nice that is, really making a lovely little cloud effect. And this is using white, and I'm just using water to blend the white in. And I can keep blending that white in. It makes a lovely atmospheric um, little bit of a picture there. Little white highlights on the edge of the card scrape. To make it look as though the clouds, the moon, is illuminated from the sky. Gives depth. There you go, 17 Australian dollars. Gary's worked it out for you. Perfect. So that is now ready to move on into the foreground. So let's take a look down here now. So let's let's work in the front of the picture now. Let's do something down here. We'll pop that white to one side. Um, it'll be useful probably later on. So we'll stick that up there. So Put that up there, put that up there, and uh, let's crack on. Size 10 brush, I think, to start with. And natural grey is going to be the key colour here. We're going to get mood and atmosphere. Uh, medium sort of strength of grey. There it is. And let's add some mid-ground to the picture. Starting about here, we're going to go straight in with this. Let's just go in and paint a bit of a creepy looking old cemetery or something. That's what we're going to go for here. But it needs some some kind of background or something going in first. So I'm just going to paint in this edge here. So 
that's going to come all the way across to there bring it down water on the brush just scrub in here with water now I'm sure you've seen some of my other videos on the YouTube channel there's there's a lot it's probably clocking on 100 videos on there they must be by now um, so if you've not a chance to look back do because it's good fun it's good fun it is in fact let's just use that card and let's just pop in some little texture to this as well like did this. just make it look a little bit texture there we go perfect and i'm then going to use one of my tree and texture brushes this is the medium size one medium tree and texture brush which we've got here take the gray we'll stipple it that's called bashing the brush a bit closer in for you here I'm painting some distant trees distant trees I'm going to stick all the brush here some creepy old trees across this edge here work along this edge we'll blend all this in in a minute but it's like a silhouette of trees it helps to give scale which is quite key for a picture like this over this side we'll do some as well quite nice there aren't they good beautiful um we'll drop down into the middle here and uh, that's given us like a a line of foliage let's say now right in the distance or this little gap i've left here what i want to do there get a little bit closer into that i want to paint in some sort of railings or some kind of a gateway or something similar to that and that's i'm using a size six brush or a small matthew palmer super point brush for this beautiful um nice detailed brush i'm using for this so i'm going to go in here and this will sort of sit next, sit next to the trees or bushes and we'll paint this little sort of gate post we'll call it a gate post here um, pretty silhouetted against the scene here so we'll take that in there we'll have another one of those sneaking at the back the sky is a big feature on this picture but obviously we need to have more than a sky you need some kind of a landscape in there so you can see I'm doing this and if I just sort of work it into the landscape because that's all wet down there steady what we'll do is we'll go in we'll do another one of those here can't go wrong can you beautiful then drop in some little shadows get that in there and then actually floating around i have this brush which is a detail brush branch and detail brush lovely lovely brush strong with the color here beautiful bit of strong natural gray natural gray is made from primary colors and um, it's the number one color that we sell because it's basically shadows so you need to get yourself some natural gray 50 shades of gray that's what it's all about we use this like a like a pen Going to be good this because what we're going to do here is we're going to make this thing look as though it's got some character we'll have this such a railing sneaking over there working over the top the background's nice and dry these brushes are lovely to work with because you don't have to keep reloading them every few seconds like you do on a traditional paintbrush. And we'll basically do do this. But we'll do some with a bit of character. Like, right, you know, they've seen better days. It's 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 these little touches that actually make these things look Halloween-y. You know, like a little old rustic broken down gateway fence or whatever you want to call it these little zigzaggy lines little bits like that
just think of nothing at the back there. Like a, a gateway to a creepy mansion. Phantom Manor. Love that ride at Disney. The good old Phantom Manor. Drop those in there. See? Already we've got a bit of a Halloween vibe. Just by putting that in, just just your mind kind of fills in the gaps, hopefully. So that's looking good. Um while let's come back on the camera while that's having a bit of a a moment. I mean we've created a scene which is which is really nice. Um foreground's gonna go in, foreground's gonna have a larger tree and some little bits around here. But that's that's looking rather creepy. I'm thinking an old cemetery, a creepy cemetery would work quite nice. So I'm just going to give that one last try. Again, while it's drying off, folks, have a think, have a look. Get yourself online, look. Have a look on the old website. Here it is. Get yourself online and get yourself over to the workshop that's up and coming. It's actually at the top of the screen. You'll see it flashing right now. Uh, 23rd of October is the next one. And it is a cosy campfire scene by an autumnal moonlit lake. I'm actually giving away a painting as well. I'm giving away a £200 original Matthew Palmer picture, which is how much it would be if it was in a gallery. It's always important to say with these that they're only £10 and you can watch and paint along live or at any time. And all you need is the three basic colours. Once you've booked in, what happens is you get sent an email. We sent an email, so we'll grab the dryer. Uh, we sent an email to you with all the information what you need. Three colours, three brushes and you're all set. I reckon, I reckon a lot of you that are in the live chat today will be joining me on this workshop on Sunday. Let's give it a quick dry. Taking some drying today, but it's very damp outside. Hello to Darcy, Darcy Marshall, Darcy's back with us. Darcy kind of looks after the chat there, so hello to you, Darcy. Um, are the gaps in the fence where the zombies have escaped? Yes, you've been watching The Walking Dead as well, same as me. <laughs> Absolutely, you know. Yes, why not? Um, okay, so we've got that, and that looks really nice, but I want some foregrounding, I want some midgrounding as well, so we're going to gradually work our way forward in this picture now and pop in some little creepy bits. Now obviously Halloween is not everybody's cup of tea, but even that is a picture, you know, that is a painting right there. But I want to get closer in and I want to add some sort of gravestones and headstones and we can think of some creative names to put on them like um, either Willie, Seymour Tit, um, I don't know. Pop me some creative ones. Miles from London. That's a good one. Anyway, pop them in the chat. Stick them in the comments. Stick them in the comments. Yes, if you're watching it after. 64 likes. Yeah, we have to keep an eye on the chat in case we get any bots or any trolls. You know, the people that try and spam. We've been pretty lucky recently. So, we've been pretty good. We've been pretty good. Okay, right. Size six brush. We're talking gravestones. We're talking We're talking headstones here, folks. We're talking a creepy old cemetery. Maybe even the occasional street lamp. Andy has just donated £2 to the Watercolour Fund to the YouTube channel. Thank you, Anne. Super chat. Thank you so much. Let's go for this. 
we'll start off by popping something here now these are going to be quite quite dark in contrast that's the thing with these so um i'm actually going to sneak in a bit of brown into the mix a bit of natural brown mixed in actually with natural grey and it's going to make your colour pop forward a little bit so mix brown with grey if you've got natural brown and it'll make it a little bit deep um, more vibrant because he's red in that brown so so yeah there you go so that little bit of natural brown is quite nice we're just going to pop in some old an old hammer horror i think that the inspiration for this is probably going to be a bit of hammer horror it's got to be ain't it really i like a bit of hammer horror so this time of year we just come back from the Fright Night event at a, a theme park in the UK called um, Thought Park, which was which was very good. And it's basically they have all you know, it's like a one of the theme parks, like like Alton Towers kind of thing. Let's continue by popping a few more of these on. If anybody's ever been to Highgate Cemetery in London, which was the first munis mun municipal cemetery. Um, I think it was in the world. I might be wrong with that fact, and uh, yeah, it's got some very spooky areas in there. There's all sorts of spooky tales of ghosts and vampires and everything in there. So, if you're ever in London and uh, you want to go, I get cemeteries is good for a little wonder. It definitely is. Lots of celebrities. Charles Dickens is buried there. Karl Marx is buried there. So is Jeremy Beadle, actually. For those people that know where Jeremy Beadle is, he's buried there. Like a status thing being buried in there, I think, in Highgate Cemetery. It's the old, the old cemetery. So I'm sort of painting a little bit of a base to these as well and you'll see where we're going to go with that base a little bit later so you can see i'm adding these little little sort of stones on here and that introduction of brown into the mix really makes the color um stand forward so have we got any good names for these gravestones then any suggestions my suggestion was ivor willie and seymour tit but Maybe, maybe you can call me something better than that. I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. Miles from London. All, all things like that. Those kind of things. You know what I mean, don't you? I think we're going to have a, a spade handle where the Undertaker's been. A little bit of a, a little bit of a spade. It's a bit Buffy Vampire Slayer. This I think. And now I'm just going to use water and blend this in. So I've just picked up water on the brush here. I'm just going to basically water it down. Water on your page, and then just blend it down. Make it look as though it's attached to the page. I'm going to layer it in. Now, when that does have a moment to dry, we'll pop some shadows in from these as well, as though the moon's catching against it. There we go. it a bit of texture perfect there we go 
That was good, don't it? That, that nice little bit of uh, creepy foreground, dark against dark, which is always interesting to do. Um, always a difficult thing to try and achieve on a painting dark on dark, but that's that's actually worked quite well, and that looks really creepy in the foreground. So it just wants something on these two sides. Now, as the light catches the paper here, it's quite hard to see. Um, but if I get close into these stones here, and I've still got that white paint hanging around, take a little bit of that, just a touch, and what I want to do here is put my hand in the white, when I'm going the first time, take that out, and uh, actually pop in a little, little highlight from the moon, illuminating them. I'll blend these in in a sec. Soften them down a bit. As there's a thunderstorm. Beautiful. Clean the brush. Wipe it through the tissue. And then just if needs be, I don't think you have to do much of this, but just lightly ease them in. Just give them a little bit of a blend, soften them down a bit. I know they're illuminated in the, in the picture. There you go. What a difference that makes, yeah? Hopefully you agree. It does really add to them. And it's tempting to add, um, obviously, something to these corners, so we'll do that next. But yeah, what a difference the white makes. It really does make the whole thing just have instant pop. And I guess a similar thing could be done to the to the tops of these railing uh, posts here. Just a little hint of white on there. Wouldn't really do much on there, to be fair. And then just use water to soften it in. So it just gives them a little bit more presence. But yeah, that's 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 affected that that bit of colour there. So let's think about the foreground of this picture here. That looks really good. Let's put in some foliage. Natural grey. Ebenezer Spooky. That's a suggestion from Nigel. And next grandchildren are watching the picture, watching the demo. Hello to you. Hope you're enjoying. Do you like Halloween? That's the thing. There's the grey with some of that brown popped in. Good bit of colour there. Beautiful, beautiful bit of colour. I want to get a bit of a foreground in here next. So we're going to bring in this. I mean, that that is dark. Oh, that's dark. Bring that in there. Get that in there, son. Stick it in. Bring it down. And we'll continue this over here. Look at that. Lovely bit of character. If you probably realise, I'm just making this up as I go along. Back to the train texture brush. Rob your blind, there's a good one. Ivan O's. Yes. Some good ones coming from uh, from John. Good names for the older headstones. Look how that frames that. Let's, let's just... The studio lights reflect off the wet paint, so we have to sometimes move the camera a little bit, but you can see there, if we do the same over here as well. Again, we can put some highlights in here from the sky, but that's a lovely little bit of foreground. These little sort of bushes. And I'm using this lovely train texture brush here. Again, all the materials, folks, I'm using are available online. And of course, it's not... Not just for painting Halloween pictures. Although I'd be quite happy painting lots of Halloween. Look at that. I love how it frames it. Ooh. Let's 
Plastic card. Plastic card. Let's do some rocky areas in the foreground here. Tree roots or whatever we decide they're going to be. Just adds a bit of foreground interest, don't it, to the to the picture. Nice. Can't go wrong with that, can you? Even pop some little But actually I've got something better over here. I've got a got a palette knife. A bit more detailed at doing some little creepy old branches. Just sat in this corner here. That's nice. That adds a lovely bit of interest, doesn't it, to it? Come back a bit. That like sort of frames the picture, don't it? There. Look how that. Let's come back a bit wider with it. There you go. Sort of frames frames this scene here. So a few a few bits to go at this, but it's taking taking a nice bit of shape. I love all this kind of. We've gone darker as we've got closer. That's the basic logic here. So you've made the colour stronger. As you get yourself closer in, uh, which is nice. Now, using that beautiful, beautiful uh, branch and detail brush again, you can see it's one of my own brushes. You can see it's my own design. Um, there is a really good sale running through Watercolor TV Art Shop at the minute, as of the end of October, as of the twentieth of October. Um, for example, you can get the um, Super Point brushes with a free how to use video um, until the end of October. So little bits like that, right, okay? And and uh, of course, if you're a watercolor TV member, then you do actually get a huge discount on products as well. You get 10% off everything as well as the sale prices, which is really quite good. So I wanna pop in some old creepy railings down here next in this foreground. Just put these little, little bit of foreground detail in, if it helps. And I'm using exactly the same colour, but obviously a different brush. And the idea of these branching detail brushes is that it holds a lot of colour that gradually feeds the tip. So it makes it really, really interesting. And like I say, this entire painting has been created completely just by sitting here having no idea what we're gonna do. But it's just nice to do something and it, it puts you in that frame of mind for the season, you know? Should you like this sort of thing? It's not everybody's cup of tea, obviously. But uh, for me personally, I've always been quite a fan of, right from being a child, you know, I've always enjoyed a bit of Halloween stuff, so. Yeah. Now, if you do have a go at this picture, Make sure you pop it on um, on uh, Facebook. I've got a Facebook group actually. Um, have a look at it. It's uh, Matthew Palmer, Matthew Palmer's watercolor group. It's a lovely place to uh, to see what people are up to and and just talk about art. I mean, it's very much an art group. 
it's a private group so you just ask to join you can also follow me on facebook as well which is just matthew palmer artist matthew palmer artist but again don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new here and hit that notification bell if you've not because that's the only way that you're going to get informed of up and coming uh, demos and i try and do a lot of demos you know as much as i can do as much as time allows and of course all these are done for free you know i don't sort of and if you if you know how much you got paid for having a youtube channel <laughs> it's um yeah maybe you've got a youtube channel that's a nice little bit of creepy old railing in the look at that isn't it good we've got drama here folks we've got a bit of drama in the watercolor tv studio now when I talk about Watercolour TV, what I'm talking about is my own website, which is a subscription-based art website. So if you're new to painting and you want to sort of learn and evolve your own particular watercolour um, paintings and just have loads and loads of tuition, there is a lot of content on Watercolour TV. Um, so do check it out. In fact, there's a cracking... I've not finished this, but there's a... a I've got to show you this because I bet you forgot. There's a cracking um, Halloween project on there. So if you're a watercolour TV member, I want to show you the picture. Let me show you this. So if uh, first of all, if you go to the membership tab of the website, that's where you can get your 30-day free trial uh, and access hundreds of art tutorials. There's, it's basically, at the minute, it's £10 a month, £50 a year, or lifetime is 400 pound you can also buy it as a gift like for christmas and various things which is quite good however if you go under lessons latest lessons here and uh, and you have a look at this there's a wonderful halloween tutorial you can see all the content on there look let me show it you here it is it's a lovely uh dramatic lightning storm halloween scene take a look at this Look how beautiful that is. So as part of your watercolour TV membership, I will guide you through how to produce that picture there and paint a Halloween scene. And that's just one of the many, many hundreds, many thousands of hours uh, worth of tuition that is on watercolour TV. So it's a membership thing. There's lots of content on there. Back to this. So I'm just going to basically continue with this and paint in some little repeat creepy branches coming up here we can actually be quite go quite high with this i think we can get these sticking out into the sky a little using this lovely brush branch and detail brush to create a lovely effect of like a, a dead tree or some kind of foliage in the foreground Nice kind of zigzaggy lines when you do this to make it look a little bit more atmospheric to what you would normally do. Quite often you'll rotate your board around when you do this sort of thing. Um, it just makes the process easier for painting sometimes. So um, do think about those little tips what I mentioned there when you do your own paintings. There is a couple of Halloween projects on my um, YouTube channel as well, so do have a look at those as well. There's one from a few years ago. They are very much demonstrations, whereas what Watercolour TV is and what the workshops are are very much steady, holding your hand, exclusive content. Think of Netflix, think of Amazon Prime, while well, Watercolour TV is the art version of that. So you subscribe to it and you can you, know, you can watch it on your TV through the web browser. Watch it on your laptops. Quite nice in the foreground. A few branches. And uh, if I come back to the tree and texture brush, a strong color. Uh, 
nice and spiky. You can just add in some little bits of leaf to the top of that tree, just using the same colour. Nice little bit of foreground for the picture. And that then leads me on to white paint. So we've been using quite a bit of white. I've still got it here. It's still fresh on the paper. I'll pop it just there. And it's quite nice to use a bit of white in your picture. This particular white is a white watercolor, but it's my own version of white. It's a nice, easy color to use. It's not a difficult color um, to work with. And I just want to paint in a little bit of a little bit of white branch, just like it's illuminating upon the moon kind of thing. Just a couple of examples of that. Just see, I'll soften those in in a second as well. And just adding a little teeny weeny bit on some of these, some of these railings as well. Again, I'll soften these in. Not every one, just a few. And then just use water and then literally with the tip of that brush I'm using a small super point brush here I'm just going to blend them in it's very difficult to get the right white and this is the right white because uh, white often disappears when once it's dry so just bear that in mind this one will not do that it's designed to stay where it is So a little bit of illumination on the tree, on the fence post is quite effective. And then if I need to get any more white, any more grey in, it's still, still hanging around. down here back to the branching detail brush just to make sure that these are still nice and dark and of course, what would a Halloween picture be without a bat over the moon? You've got to, haven't you? It's just, it's just essential to get close in. You've got to do it, haven't you? Keep it in just here, actually. Very stereotypical, I suppose. But, you know, this is what it is. <laughs> Definitely a bit of a Batman symbol going off there. Look at that, beautiful. We'll block it in, put the ears on. Oh yeah, it's definitely Batman. That's on Prowl, that's on Pull. Get your coat you've pulled. Print that. Uh, pop that in. Pop that in there. It's got a bit of a stereotypical bat. Look at that. Isn't it good? Hey, there it is. Flying. I have some distant bats as well. This will just be like that kind of thing. Don't forget if you've enjoyed this and you want more painting, we have a atmospheric scene coming up on Sunday. Join the live workshop. Sunday the 23rd is the workshop. <coughs> Excuse me. That's good into that. That little bit of a that bat over the moon. It's made a picture within a picture. 
Now, what I've got here is a good old mount. You can't beat it. We're going to pop this on the picture and we'll take a look at the picture. We'll zoom back on the picture and we'll take a look at it. Because it does make quite a difference when you put the mount on. So we'll come back nice and steady, nice and steady. We'll take a look at what we've what we've painted. There we go. There it is. That's the 2022 Halloween YouTube demo. It's made an absolute cracker of a picture. I've really enjoyed doing that. And I hope you've enjoyed watching it as well because it's been a pleasure to have the company of you. It really has. And again, we'll get nice and close and we can see all the lovely detail on there. On the highlights. In the gravestones. It's a little bit of white in the tree. It all adds to the picture. It all adds to the mood. It adds to the atmosphere of this, this watercolour project. And it's made a cracker of a picture. It really has. Now, if you'd like to uh, join me on Sunday, the workshop, 23rd, runs um, pretty much every Sunday. So if, it, if you're watching this after that date, just bear in mind um, that there's one pretty much every week. Sunday, the 23rd of October. Um, it's 10 a.m. UK time to about 2 o'clock um, UK time. And it's going to be a campfire moonlit night. Okay, so it's going to be a very nice one for this time of year atmospheric one well, link is in the description below and um, thank you for watching we've got a lovely picture there if you have a go make sure you pop it on the facebook page the facebook group is matthew palmer's watercolor group have a great halloween folks thank you for watching and hopefully i'll see you at a workshop very soon make sure you check out the website as well loads of cool stuff on there but happy halloween and thank you so much for watching take care and don't have nightmares see you soon